Good morning, Calc 2 friends. Um, here we go, our first virtual lecture. It looks like uh, flipping back through my notes, which seems like eons ago, we finished, uh, we wrapped up chapter seven. So we're gonna do our two sections in chapter eight. 8.1 is calculating the arc length of a function, which corresponds to section 2.4 in your XYZ homework. And then we will do 8.2, which is the other half of 2.4 in your XYZ homework. Hope everyone is doing well. This recording myself is really super awkward, so um, give me a few tries. I, I'll get better at it. And uh, hopefully everybody is enjoying their time at home and with family and staying safe. All right, today, arc length. What we're doing in 8.1 is we're calculating the length of a curve over a closed interval. So we have some function, f of x, and we're looking at the function over a closed interval, a to b. So we're literally just calculating the length of this curve. So if you wanted to walk along this curve, how long would it be? Or as if we were to lay a piece of string down on that curve and then lift it up and measure it, what would be the length of the curve? And the process goes as follows. Um, as with finding areas, we divide our interval up into n equal sublengths. And we look at these points right here, how it puts at those endpoints of the intervals. And then the template connects those endpoints and uses those lengths of those straight lines to estimate the length of the actual curve. And then what we do is we take the width of our intervals and we let this go to zero. So remember, whenever we break an interval up into n equal subdivisions, we call that difference delta x. When we let delta x go to zero, that always leads us to integration. So the proof of this is in your textbook. So it's 8.1. If you wanna see the details of the proof, you can turn to page 544. Plus read the exp explanation and I would be happy to discuss it over Zoom if you want to talk details. Right. So if f of x is a continuous function over the closed interval a, b, then the length of the curve y equals f of x over a, b can be found with we integrate from a to b, one plus the derivative of the function, quantity squared all under the radical, and then we integrate with respect to x. Okay. So let's look at a couple of examples here. Sorry, I got the snipples today. Let's do the length of the curve f of x equals x to the three halves over the interval from zero to four. Right. Our function of interest is x to the 3 halves, the derivative 3 halves x to 1 half, so the length of the curve over the interval 0 to 4 would be the integral from 0 to 4, square root of 1 plus 3 halves x to the 1 half quantity squared dx. This might look horrible at first, I'm uh, grabbing my calculator. It's really not terrible because once we distribute, we realize that we're actually just integrating zero to one, square root of one plus, well, don't forget to square the three halves, nine fourths, 
then x to the 1 half squared is just x. So this is a substitution problem. We're going to let u equal 1 plus 9 fourths x. du would be 9 fourths dx. I'll let you do the substitution, no pun intended. And this is going to result in 8 27ths, 1 plus 9 fourths x, don't lose the x, to the 3 halves. Let's just double check. We bring the 3 halves out front. We get 24 over 27, 4 over 9, and then we multiply by the 9 fourths, so that will work. We go from 0 to 4. Plug in the upper limit, plug in the lower limit. Now just be careful in XYZ if it asks for exact values, then you don't want to be plugging them into your calculator. Obviously you can simplify the algebra, but if it asks for approximation, then go ahead and use your calculator. If we plug in 4 here, we get plug in 4, we get 8 27 times 10 to the 3 halves. minus, plug in zero, we just get 8 27ths. And if we pop that into our calculator, it's about 9.1-ish. There we go, that's it. So this is a matter of just taking your integration skills, using the template, and rolling with it. For practice, let's work on one that's a little more difficult. Let's do, determine the length of, let's see which one I like better. Determine the length of, let's get wild and crazy, the natural log of the secant of x between 0 and pi over 4. How are we doing on time? All right, perfect. Well, my function is natural log of the secant of x. The derivative of my function, well, the derivative of the natural log of anything is 1 over that anything times the derivative of that anything. And the derivative of the secant is the secant tangent. And that simplifies nicely down to just the tangent. So keep in mind when things don't start out nice, often they turn nice if you do your algebra correctly. So therefore, the length is integrate from zero to pi over four, the square root of one plus the tangent of x squared dx. All right, but if we go to our yellow sheets or remember our trig functions, one plus the tangent squared is just the secant squared. Zero, pi over four, the square root of the secant squared. So notice how this is turning out nice. And the square root of the secant squared is just the secant. So we're just integrating the secant. We're not gonna reinvent the wheel. We've already integrated the secant previously. You should have it in your notes. And the antiderivative of the secant is the natural log of the secant plus the tangent. Okay, and we're going to use exact values. Secant to pi over 4 plus a tangent to pi over 4 minus the natural log of the secant of 0 plus the tangent of 0. Oops, zero, that should be. And the secant of pi over four is one over the cosine of pi over four. So the natural log of the square root of two, tangent of pi over four is one, secant of zero is zero, tangent of zero is zero. Oh, no, hold on, do I agree with that? Secant of zero is one. There we go, the natural log of one, that's what I meant. Tangent of zero is zero, but the natural log of one is zero. 
So therefore, my final answer is a natural log of the square root of two plus one. It's a nice number, a very complicated number that can be written nicely. Notice I removed the absolute values and changed them to parentheses because the square root of two plus one is a positive number. So there you go, friends. That should get you started on, or be able to get you through most of those problems on finding arc length. Um, please note, as, as just as if when we did our uh, volumes of revolution, our functions might be functions of x in terms of y. So note, let's make a note of this. If x is a function of y over a, b, then the length of the function over a, b, you treat it exactly the same way, we just integrate with respect to y, is one plus h prime of y squared dy. I'll make that look nice. So let's just do a quick example of this. Let's determine the length of let's do x is equal to two thirds y minus one to the let's say three halves between. y equals 1 and y equals 4. So we'll set it up and I'll let you do the integration. We would just integrate from 1 to 4. 1 plus 2 thirds y minus 1 to the 3. Oh no, don't do that. What did I forget to do? Don't forget to take the derivative. So x is equal to 2 thirds y minus 1 to the 3 halves. The derivative is y minus one to the one half. There we go, that will be better. Don't make that mistake. Because you will get something that's not nearly as pleasant. So we're just gonna integrate that from one to four. Square root of one plus y minus one to the one half quantity squared d1. Look how nice this turns out. This is just one plus square root squared is y minus one dy. So we're actually just integrating one to four, the square root of y dy. We do the work. Oops, sorry. And we can see that our answer is just simply going to work out to be 14 thirds. So be sure to work out the details, you know, keep practicing your integration, whoops, especially if you plan on taking Calc 3 in the fall, you want to be awesome integrators. So to do, after watching this lecture, read 8.1, exercises, three to 27 odd are all good to choose from, X, Y, Z, 2.1. Four, then the 2.4 exercises. Remember, XYZ exercises are replacing your quiz, not replacing, they're gonna replace the second half of your quiz grade. So I'll use the first half of your quizzes and then the second 100 points will be um, based off of your XYZ homework. I posted office hours online. So the virtual office hours are for your class only. I will not be mixing my classes during my office hours. I thought it could get too complicated. Um, if my office hours don't work, by all means, send me a message. We can still meet. Zoom allows us to meet as a group. So download Zoom, log in, uh, get in touch, and we'll see how that works. And we can still do our group meetings on Tuesdays. Uh, I'm sorry, Mondays and Wednesdays, like we were doing before this whole craziness began. Um, would love to meet up you with you guys and work on some Calc 2 stuff. 
All right, 8.2 will be in the next lecture, and that will actually be the second half of 2.4. So catch up with you in a while. See ya. Have fun.